So this is the first on the, the plant responses to the environment. Um, now we'll commonly talk about plant hormones and while it's, it's okay to think of it in those terms really that you're better off referring to them as plant growth substances although I'll probably make a mistake and call them hormones in this. Um, the reason they're called hormones is if you think about animals for a moment what hormones do is they, they cause a change in particularly a target cell or target tissue why do they have that particular effect there would be receptors on either the surface of the cell or the surface cell membrane um, or indeed that sometimes receptors are on the inside some hormones in animals um, are, are small enough to, to go th simply through the membrane so there's either receptors on the, the cell surface on the inside and we have a similar situation in plants what happens is these um, hormones are released and certain tissues receptor cell will have the receptor cells the correct ones on them and they will respond tissues that don't have the receptors will not respond however unlike um, in, in animals they're not produced by an endocrine gland plants don't have endocrine glands um, they're just released from um, other tissues really uh, and they can move through the plant in a variety of ways uh, active transport is one way they move around uh, particularly between cells and uh, going with that of course diffusion as well um, if you've got a high concentration of um, these, these plant growth substances in one place they will uh, diffuse across passively into other places and the one people forget um, it can be transported in, in xylem vessels so as water is being transported up the plants uh, you know if you go back to all your um, to, to unit one um, and, and, in, and also in phloem, which is, you remember it's called mass flow. So we've got another transport system, remember the phloem tending to go in, in um, carrying liquids in the direction. So we, we've got a, a couple of methods there for moving the things around the plant <coughs> on a large scale. Um, there's only really five that particularly come up and of particular interest to us. Now you might remember from GCSE auxins, you might not, but these are the ones, uh, the, the plant growth substances involved in um, phototropism. So this is when um, a, a plant grows towards um, the light, for example. That's the one, uh, ooh, don't worry. focus went for a minute. Um, so you, you would have had these uh, pictures where you'd have had a, a plant growing like this, and then you, um, if you remember the, the area of growth is just behind the tip of the root. This would be meristem tissue. These are the, uh, the the tissues or the meristem cells that can um, undergo mitosis and cell elongation, and that's where the, the area of the growth would be. So there are various experiments. For example, you can cut the tip off, and it stops growing, or you can cover the tip in something like foil, and like that, and it keeps growing, but it just grows upwards, like that. And we had this idea that if you put a strong light source onto it, it, it does have to be quite, uh, let's say strong, intense, perhaps light source would be a better way to put it, then the plant will grow towards that light source. Uh, and what it actually did is the, these auxins, um, I should just draw another one, let's draw it down here. Um, the auxins, which are, are normally pretty evenly distributed, would move over to one side of the plant, and this would cause the plant to um, grow towards the light. Now, this this word tropism is, is quite important here. Um, you, you may or may not have come across kinesis yet, which is uh, a type of behaviour in animals. That's to do with uh, with a movement, and a tropism isn't really a movement. It's it's growth. What's happening here in these um, stems and, and in the roots as well? Although in, in, in the case of the roots, uh, the auxins actually go the opposite side. They inhibit growth, which is a bit weird. Um, but a tropism is a growth towards something, and you'll come across a couple of different types. So you'll have phototropism, which is growth towards light. Um, you'll have geotropism, which is growth towards um, effectively the earth if you like but it, it's done by gravity so roots would use this system you know if you put a seed upside down in the ground it finds it's the, the roots will grow downwards um, and that's a geotropism and the, the shoot as it turns out will also grow upwards we'll come back to that in a second um, chemotropism which is 
um, growth towards chemicals and the example of this in your book is about pollen tubes when a, a, a pollen lands on top of a um, if, if you've done this if you you don't because you got taken off the, took off the syllabus a long time ago this is basically um, the female part of the plant called the stigma the style and the ovary and the, the egg cell will be down here um, the pollen lands on the top this is usually sticky and it, it grows a big long tube down and then when it reaches the plant the the nucleus goes all the way down which is pretty clever how does it know which way the the tube's going to grow it doesn't know anything it's simply responding to the stimulus of chemicals a chemical uh, gradient if you like uh, last one this one gets forgotten a lot it's called figmotropism and this is about touch and the example that's usually given for this is ivy if you think about ivy the way it grows like along a fence or a wall um, it's very tough to get off actually it grows in terms it, it it's about touch response so when it can touch against something it grows against it, it doesn't grow outwards um, because it would have no support ivy which is a, a, a parasitic plant which is quite nice <coughs> excuse me um, yeah, so I, I sort of come back to this idea of, of, of geotropism, and uh, there's also a hydrotropism growth towards water, which some roots can uh, can display. We can put a little bit extra onto this because we can call things negative or positive. So, for example, positive geotro uh, phototropism is growing towards light, but you could have positive or negative geotropism. So, roots would exhibit positive geotropism; they're moving towards um, gravitational pull, if you like. Uh, negative geotropism would be moving the opposite direction uh, and if you think about it for a second here's some soil and we've planted a seed inside let's say it's upside down so the roots come out and they would grow that way which way does the shoot go well it can't respond to light because it's under the ground at the moment it would have to have negative geotropism until it can get its way out and then it can start you know, the leaves start to come in it would grow towards the light whatever it is so you can have positive or negative versions of, of both of these um, so auxins, which are involved in, um, just come over here again. Auxins, the something called indolacetic acid. You'd be glad to know. You can just call it IAA. And what does it do? Uh, it promotes cell elongation. More on that later on. Probably another uh, video, to be honest. Um, inhibits side shoots um, and inhibits abscission unfortunately um, abscission sounds rather like um, another one of these plant growth substances called abscisic acid um, which isn't linked people thought it was linked to abscission which is why it's called abscisic acid and they found it wasn't uh, i'll just come back to this one inhibits side shoots you might have seen this if you know people who um what call pruning plants if i've got a plant like this and um, i go around with a pair of secateurs and I snip off the end then I've snipped off the end with the auxins in and side shoots are these bits once you snip the end off they start shooting out and growing more and it makes the the plant bushier so that's why people do it they prune it they remove those auxins from the tip and it allows these side shoots to grow when the the auxins are there it inhibits the growth from the side think about it from plants perspective uh, it doesn't want to be wasting its time sending out um, side shoots it wants to be growing higher so it can compete for sunlight uh, just briefly these other ones so the cytokinins and just running out, uh, which is cell division it's effectively mitosis wonderfully named gibberellins or L and that's to promote seed germination germination of a seed when um, if seeds will obviously sit there in a packet for a long time if they're dry um, what starts them off it's usually warmth and what water but gibberellins are involved in that uh, abscisic acid the one i mentioned before um, <coughs> excuse me which inhibit germination inhibit seed germination and they close stomata in cases of um uh, water stress from the plant uh, needs to hold water so for example when it's um, not much water around and the odd one ethene yep yeah, the very same ethene that you, you've learned about perhaps in chemistry the gas uh, which promotes fruit ripening now you might have noticed some of these things promote in other words they, they enable things to happen and some of them inhibit and you you get this combination of these plant growth substances 
some of them will promote something, some of them will inhibit. In other words, they are antagonistic. Uh, other ones um, act to um, work together, so one will, will have an effect, perhaps amplify another one, which is called synergy.